Hi everyone, my name is Tom Rosewell. I'm an economist with the Reserve Bank. Today I'm going to talk about recent developments in household spending. The Australian economy is going through a very difficult period and is experiencing the largest contraction since the 1930s. Social distancing restrictions and other containment measures that have been used to control the virus have had a major impact on Australian households. Since March, an unprecedented 800,000 people have lost their jobs with many others retaining their job only because of support programs. And we've also seen the impact of restrictions through the spending behavior of households. In today's talk, I'd like to take you through some of the main developments in recent months and how we think about the outlook for household spending. My team at the Reserve Bank spends a lot of time thinking about economic conditions for households. This is because households are central to the bank's goals of price stability, full employment, and the economic prosperity and welfare of the Australian people. Household spending, which we also refer to as consumption, is a very important part of the economy. Total spending in the economy, or aggregate demand, AD, is the sum of consumption, investment, government spending, and exports minus imports. In fact, consumption accounts for more than half of aggregate demand. You can find out more information on aggregate demand and economic growth in the link below. Our best source of information on consumption is the national accounts published by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. The ABS published the national accounts for the March quarter last month. We learned that household consumption declined by 1% in the March quarter to be a little, over, a little lower over the past year. As you can see in the bottom panel of this graph, it's quite unusual for consumption to decline in, in a quarter. In fact, the March quarter decline was the weakest outcome since the mid 1980s. The decline was driven by a sharp fall in spending on services, such as at hotels, cafes and restaurants, and on transport services. This was because people started to stay at home in March uh, as, as the outbreak of the virus began. We are forecasting a much bigger decline in consumption in the June quarter. We published our forecast for the economic outlook uh, in May in the Statement on Monetary Policy. And you can check out the summary by my colleague Mark Chambers via the link. Under the assumptions these forecasts were based on, household consumption was forecast to decline by around 15% in the June quarter. This was because social distancing measures and other restrictions on household activities, such as the ban on international travel, uh, and it is likely that some households would choose to buy less because of increased uncertainty about employment or concern about the outlook for the economy. We will get national accounts information about the June quarter in a few months time. Until then, we can look at a range of other indicators to give us a more up-to-date read on household spending. This is particularly important when things are changing so quickly, as is the case at the moment. In fact, some of the indicators that we look at have recorded their largest monthly changes we have ever seen. We've used some of these indicators to inform us about household behaviour for a long time, but some indicators are rel relatively new, as the ABS and other data providers have ad adapted to provide a wider range of timely information uh, to the public. Retail sales, such as the purchases we make in supermarkets, clothing stores and cafes, account for about a th one third of ha total household consumption. The ABS publishes monthly data on retail sales and has started to publish preliminary estimates uh, preliminary estimates that are available within a few weeks after each month is finished. This has been really useful for us to get a timely read on spending activity. These data show us that spending patterns have changed dramatically since the outbreak uh, and, that, and since restrictions on activity were introduced. The monthly changes in retail sales recently have been the largest we've ever seen and tell an interesting story about the changes in household behaviour. Total retail sales values increased strongly in March as many households prepared for a period of restrictions with precautionary uh, purchases at supermarkets. Purchases of home entertainment and other recreational items and items related to setting up home offices were also very strong in March. But then retail sales fell sharply in April. The decline in the month was broad based across the different categories of retail, but sales of clothing and footwear in green uh, in the graph and cafes and restaurants in blue fell particularly sharply. 
And then in May, retail sales increased very strongly in the month, a record increase. The ABS noted that there were very large increases uh, of, on spending for clothing and footwear and personal accessory retailing, cafes, restaurants, takeaway food as well. And this was as restrictions on activity were lifted uh, or started to be lifted in May. Despite the rises, um, these sectors remain well below the level of spending we saw this time last year. There are also large rises in household goods retailing with retailers reporting increased spending related to home improvement, furniture, home entertainment, home office, that sort of thing, as people um, spent more time at home. Food sales uh, have also increased as households uh, continue to eat more at home uh, during the period of restrictions. Another timely indicator of household spending we use is motor vehicle sales. Motor vehicle sales to both households and businesses have increased strongly in May and June after falling sharply in April. Buying a car is one of the largest spending decisions many households will make. Even though motor vehicle sales only account for about 2-2.5% of consumption, it's a useful indicator of how households feel about their finances and, and uh, about the outlook. In April, measures of consumer sentiment fell to their lowest level since the 1990s recession. Sentiment measures are based on survey questions about how households feel about economic conditions and their personal finances. These components fell significantly in April, consistent with reported job losses and increased uncertainty about the outlook. Since then, encouragingly, measures of consumer sentiment reversed some of their declines following the announcements of fiscal and uh, monetary measures to support households and the lifting of restrictions for parts of the economy. We've also been using measures of foot traffic uh, and mobility from Google and Apple as a way of gauging economic activity in a really timely way. Foot traffic at public transport stops and stations across Australia fell by around about 60% in March, although movements around grocery stores and pharmacies did not decline as much. Foot traffic remains subdued through April. It appears uh, that individuals and businesses voluntarily adjusted their behaviour to some extent ahead of more formal government restrictions. The ABS has also launched a new household survey that is providing us with timely information about how households are responding to the pandemic. In the latest survey, the majority of households surveyed report reported that they were comfortable resuming some activities, such as going to work or attending small social gatherings. But the survey found that many people remain uncomfortable with resuming air travel or attending large public events. The mobility data and survey results highlight that the outlook for some types of household spending depends very much on people having confidence about their health and uh, just as much as the restrictions that have been enforced by uh, governments. It is possible that the depth of the downturn will be less than earlier expected. The rate of new infections has declined and some restrictions have been eased earlier than we previously thought. There's been some improvement across a few of the timely household indicators we look at. This is important because household spending accounts for more than half of aggregate demand. Notwithstanding the signs of gradual improvement, the nature and speed of the economic recovery remains highly uncertain. Uncertainty about the health situation and the future strength of the economy is making many households and businesses cautious, and this is affecting consumption and investment plans. The pandemic is likely to have long lasting effects on households and the economy. Thanks for watching.